And thanks for joining us. As you may have noticed, we've been building down to Saturday. It is a super delegates conference of the MPP. Well, the official name in the party's constitution is the Special Electoral College. But yeah, we like the ring of super delegates. So let's use that, shall we? MPP will be deciding. They will be deciding on the presidential ambitions of five people, which will be terminated on Saturday. Five others will continue with their, their search and their march towards what they hope to be a confirmation that they are presidential materials and they can leave the MPP. And so tonight we're going to spend some time doing analysis of the, the 10, very brief, because on Friday they want to join us because we have a dedicated show that will be solely for the analysis and that will delve into it deeper with some very great insights. So you want to join us on Friday. So tonight I'll just scratch the surface and I'll sit with the former employment minister who also doubles now as campaign communications person for the Baumia camp. And my guest will join me pretty shortly. I'll introduce him when we get there. But let's get to it. Let's bring in the faces. And many of you have been watching them across the country doing their campaigns and talking. Who are these individuals indeed? Let's start with the first one. Kennedy at Japan. And boy, Kennedy at Japan has become a thorn in the flesh of almost everybody in this particular field. Many didn't really think that he would even have the courage to enter the race, but he did. And since he did, he's become, many say, a darling boy of the delegates. I'm not talking about the special letter college. I'm talking about the grassroots delegates of the party across the country. They love him. And there are, there are a lot of conversations happening right now about he possibly could be the kingmaker when it comes to this particular race, not Saturday, but in November, when the real deal comes around. The real deal is when they actually get to elect who the flag bearer is. On the uh, Saturday, they're just going to separate the men from the boys, really. Those who've been pretending to be presidential material, they'll be just uh, erased, and then the five will go through. And many suggest that Kennedy and Japan will certainly be one of those five going through. I don't know. The delegates will decide that. The Special Electoral College will decide that. But definitely, he is one to watch going into Saturday. Who else is there? Alan Chermanting. And by the way, it, it, many do not dispute the fact that he is one of the two front runners in this race. If you are arranging the order, you put him right there with... The vice president will come to him pretty shortly because also of his history, because of the history he's had contesting these same primaries in the past and the gravitas he comes to this with. He's definitely up there and, and a front runner indeed. And then you also have Joe Gatti. Joe Gatti believes that he also stands a chance. But many say, really, chance where? Of course, he's a former attorney general. He is a former, uh, you know, railways minister. And he comes to this with a, a former run under his belt as well. So he believes he has what it takes. But if you look at the field, how much of a chance does he stand? Again, the special delegates will decide. And many have called him the single biggest underdog in the race. It's Kojopoku is an energy expert. He's been here. We've talked to him before. But he doesn't see himself as a massive underdog at all because he believes that he has what it takes and that he will surprise a lot of people, right? And that he'll be in the top five. Um, but will he? He's been campaigning. And the question is, where is his constituency? He's been around the country uh, doing so. And then you have Dr. Fria Kutu, who, by the way, is a former agri minister, has been on PM Express also, where we put a few questions to him. It's in the race also. I mean, the point is, on Saturday, one of them, or five of them, will be disappointed. Will he be one of those disappointed? I don't know. But he believes... He is going to be top five. He's going to be top five and he's going to be number one in November. But what chances he got? He's been campaigning quite vigorously. We were talking last time when he spoke to us, alleging that uh, contractors who do not support him and others are being victimized, are not being paid. Well, so there's a lot of allegations he's thrown around. And the delegates, are they buying it? We don't know. And then I introduce you to... Kwabana Ejiye Japan, and he was also on my show a couple of weeks back, and he made a strong impression, many believes, when he launched his campaign. He's been there, 
He's done that. He served as a campaign manager for the incumbent president. He was the uh, spokesperson for uh, former president Kufour. So he's, he's done this before. And indeed, of course, he's the general, former general secretary of the party as well. And he's also there in with a shout, he believes, to become the party's flag bearer. So the field is a, is a tall one. And then comes Singer Dynamo, a man who's done it before, he's run this before it and lost many times. But he's still in there. He believes this time he will be lucky. But will he? Considering the formidable names in the race, can he really aspire to anything close to top five on Saturday? And then Dr. Kofi Kunedua Preku, another of the aspirants who was with us on the show um, last month. And he says his claim to this throne that they are all fighting for is his experience working for ECOWAS, but also as a former uh, regional integration minister under uh, Kofor, and he wants to bring change using that experience in solving the many challenges this country faces. But one of the things he says is that uh, he was hoping that he would have been given a position in the Akufuado government. He was obviously ignored, and that is something that he is unhappy about. Is it something that is influencing his campaign across the country? We don't know. The delegates will make a decision. And just this week, Wache Jaco was here on Monday. A very fascinating conversation indeed. And he says something. Something that many had rumored, but he then added a bit of meat to that bone. That all these nine aspirants, he says seven or eight of them, they have been meeting. And in one of the meetings, a conversation came up. Who is the establishment candidate. And he says, well, establishment candidate is obviously Dr. Baumia, who is the vice president. And they, among themselves, had a conversation. So if it comes to a runoff in November, what should we do? And the possibility, possibility, is that all of them may form the way they use an alliance against who? The vice president. Vice president possibly may come up against all of them if what Wache Jaco says is something that comes to fruition. He says it is a possibility. They haven't actually had an agreement to do it, but it has been discussed and it is a possibility. And he says politics, all politics, is about alliance. He makes the point emphatically that if you don't understand that, then you've lost the plot. But many of them have spoken to us and said, yes, we've been talking. Kudopoku says, yes, we've been talking, but Dr. Baumia has not been part of the conversation. They've written to him to join. He hasn't joined, but why? I guess tonight we get to clarify that point when we speak to his campaign communications director on this particular show. So these are the individuals. Many say he is the outright front runner, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, outright front runner, and that he will get and win the Saturday's special electoral college with a landslide, will he? Dr. Baumia would obviously make that point quite forcefully. Alan Chamantin will also lay claim to it. But we're watching what will unfold on Saturday. For Dr. Baumia, many say, considering the category of people voting, there isn't any doubt that he will win it. The question is, what's the margin? By what margin, right? And if he gets anything in the 50s and just about 50, he may be limping into, into November. And so he should be looking at a landslide, a super, super win uh, for him on Saturday, for, for him to leave no doubt. But then many say, if you go into November, where more than 200,000 will be voting, where the grassroots are, that's where Alan Jamanteng's strength will come to play. And that's why they've not really been happy with this old special electoral college uh, issue. Very interesting names, very interesting faces. Five of them will be cancelled from the board on Saturday. Okay, a few additional things that we found was interesting. And as we build into this, we have to get into Friday by understanding where MPP had come from. If you go back to 1992, you will see that MPP has a very interesting history with primaries. It started off there where Professor Dubahin won that primary and there were seven of them. So MPP goes into these primaries with, with, a, with a significant number of people, everybody wanting to be president. Seven of them. Professor Dubain came up as a, as a candidate at that time. 1996 drops to six. 
aspirants all vying to be president. And then you go to 1998, it comes to six. And that's where we saw the current president also vying uh, to be president there. And of course, he lost to J.A. Kufu at the time. But of course, J.A. Kufu won that. And in 20, uh, 2003, he was unopposed. Of course, he was incumbent. You don't want to touch him. And then comes, I guess, the most important time in the MPP's history as far as primaries are concerned. 2007, the young political reporter on the primary of the University of Ghana covering this groundbreaking primary where 17, unprecedented number, all of them wanting to be president. In the end, he left the party raptured. And after that, the party said, never again will we go to a primary with this many people all vying to be president. And that is why they tweaked their constitution and introduced this special electoral college, fundamentally influenced by what happened here in 2007. 17 of them. In the end, Akufuado could not master the 50 plus 1 that we need. Alan Chamanteng stepped down for him to go. And Alan Chamanteng has been using that in this campaign, by the way. He said that is the ultimate sacrifice, is what he did in 2007. I'll ask Alan Kumia if he agrees if that's the ultimate sacrifice. And then, as we wrap up, we go to 2010. We have five of them. Um, you, you come to 2014, there were three of them. And by the way, now you begin to see the dominance of the incumbent president. Yeah, and I will tell you the scores very, very soon, because that is what Baumia, if he wants to win, should be aiming for. 2020, 2020 unopposed, and 2023, of course, we have 10 of them. So that tells you a story of MPP when it comes to the sheer number of people who always want to be president. They believe they have the men. If they say you have the men and it comes to president, everybody wants to be in there with a shout. And that's what has happened. But this is the reason why we have the Special Electoral College. This is what the party's constitution, Article 12b, says that you must have this you know, special electoral college to take a decision. And national council members, members of parliament will be voting. The elite of the party will be making the decision there. And then the results of 2007 is what I was talking about. These two, the most interesting, of course, because then when it came to it, um, nobody got the 50 plus one uh, vote that you require. Alan Chamati had to step back for the uh, president to go. And that left the party a bit, rap, you know, ruptured a bit. And that led to many changes in the MPP's constitution. So that's it. A very important race there has defined the party ever since uh, going forward. Obeche Belamte, may he so rest in peace, where, where, where else was also in that particular race. It's, the name just grows. Each time you click the change button, you get one more name aspiring to be president. That is a major, major history for the party. And they don't want to repeat that. 2010. Of course, the president wins at 78%. And I'm, I've been making a point. This is what Alan Chamanting and Dr. Baumia are both looking for, and particularly the incumbent vice president who should be hoping to get something this rigid if he really wants to show to the rest that he has the overwhelming support of the party, at least at that level. Um, the incumbent president showed that 94%. Can Baumia? get anything close to 94%, he'll be hoping for that because that will be a major message going into, into November to sell. The bandwagon theory will be on the side if he, if he gets this. And Kanala and Chamanteng make it impossible for him to get close to that. So the history is very clear, as you've seen at the polls and what the uh, polling have said. And these polling that we've seen over the last few weeks are interesting. I want to show you two of them before we sit for a conversation, two of them. This is the global info analytics poll. And he asked the question, okay, if we were voting at the time we were doing this, who will you vote for among sample delegates uh, for the MPP? And at that time, 36% say they will vote for Obama. So, Obama, yeah, if they were voting, and this is not about the de super delegates where they're going to cut down to five. This is about if we were going into actual elections. So, Obama yeah, should win it by 36%, except that this would have been a case of a runoff, right? Because you need 50% plus to go. And as we've heard from Bachi Jaku, if this happened, then the nine of them will form an alliance, right? So this is a very interesting point. In, in any case, Bermia leads there. And then you come to, we've seen also the uh, story of the top, of the top five uh, going into uh, Saturday. This is a prediction of what will happen um, from Global Info Analytics. And then we also saw one uh, this week that Paul Baumia uh, significantly ahead, winning uh, handsomely in the 70%. So MPP is deciding. What has 
the vice president got to say about it. We've spoken to a lot of the aspirants. Let's talk to his chief mouthpiece. Stay with me. Hello, my name is Abeiku Agri Santana. If there's anything that makes my life so easy, it is my bank. I love hanging out with my boys' boys at our usual fufu joint. But even without cash, we still need chop better with EcoBank Mobile. No matter the time of day, my bank helps me stay in touch with my beautiful wife whenever she's away. And when my beautiful wife is in town, she never misses out on her favorite TV shows because I'm able to pay up all my TV subscriptions from the comfort of my mobile phone. Whenever she has to get groceries too, my bank makes it cashless and convenient. And the part my wife loves the most is when my bank makes it possible and easy for her to shop from any part of the world without moving. <laughs> Welcome to the smart world of EcoBank. Download EcoBank Mobile from Google Play Store. All the apps store and discover the smart way to bank. Echo Bank, the Pan-African Bank. Daddy, Daddy, this tank is big. Yes, that's true. It can store a lot of water. That's so true. Wow, it has a working surface like this. Mm -hmm. That's so true. I can see us. I-N-T-E-S mm -hmm. Syntax! That is so true, my daughter. But it falls down into spoilers. That's not true. But why? Why? <laughs> Syntax was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntax again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty, seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex Tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? Ah! Crazy pa! Don't stop now, me. Risky. Wash it. All of a sudden, my voice, I hear different. And we need to try a call. Uh, Batman, bring me the honey whiskey. You know the one? Black Rock Whiskey. Honey Whiskey. Chale, honey near their frow. Black Rock Whiskey is strong. Now she tastes me as smooth. And it goes down easy. Uh, excuse me. Mm. <coughs> Batman. <laughs> Batman, bring my friend one Black Rock Whiskey. Black Rock Whiskey, blended with natural honey flavor. Hey, what's up? Batman. Where the old folks can turn Sata? The beer been to my no. Black Rock Whiskey. Tabby, the feel is smooth, Nasno. Drink responsibly. Not for sale to persons under 18 years of age and not recommended for pregnant women. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. There are days when you think, whoa, today I've earned it. So order a global. Days when plants run longer. What if we order a global? Or days when you can't control everything. Oh yes, because on Global, you can order anything you want. Global, you order, we deliver. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint. As compared to other paint brands on the market, we take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint as you can clearly see flamingo has the obvious better hiding furthermore flamingo has painted a much larger area you know one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage, flamingo paint, simply superior. Daddy, daddy, 
dit oh, This tank is big Yes, that's true It can store a lot of water That's so true Wow, it has a working surface on it mm -hmm. That's so true I can see S I N mm -hmm. T E mm -hmm. S Vintage. That is so true, my daughter. Well, it falls down into spoil. That's not true. But why? Yay! <laughs> Syntex was the first to introduce double layer tanks in Ghana. Syntex again was the first to introduce white inner layers in Ghana. Syntex gives you the biggest warranty seven years. No matter your water needs, Syntex is the answer. Syntex tank. Are you strong? Are you tough? Can he tee up someone in red? And it goes to one! Do not say! You go, you go. What five champions in You want to know? I'll be the real goat. Say, I'm not the real goat. I'm not the magician. I'm not the Who is the goat? Ghana Jollof or Nigerian Jollof? Ghana Jollof has no co equal. The smell alone. Oh my god. Oh, that's it. You two, they lie, eh? Now they say, I know lives in Tama. Every year, we the give to you back. back, 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 back. We are talking about BET. I want to hear your face. I said be the goat, huh? My guy, he be the goat. <laughs> Though our choice of goats may differ in football, music, and jollof, Alumobitis always brings us together. Alumo experience greatness in every moment. <laughs> Drink responsibly. Not for sale to persons under 18. Not recommended to pregnant women. This advert is FDA. Thanks for staying with us. Nana Kumi is with me in the studio. Nana Kumi is a former employment minister, but he's also now the campaign communications director for Dr. Baumia, and he joins me in the studio. I'm, I'm curious when I had that designation. I mean, why did you decide to take up this role? Well, because I believe in the Dr. Baumia's candidature. I believe that he's the best. Uh, foot for the NPP at this time to put forward. I believe strongly in it. And when you believe in something, you don't want to uh, take, an, take a passive role. You want to take an active role. So when the man himself uh, came to see me a few times and, and asked me if I could play that role, I was delighted and honored. Okay. Um, let, we'll, we'll delve into that a bit more because he mm -hmm. is... Like the other communication directors, he is formidable. Member of Parliament, four term, former employment minister. So to be campaign communications director, well, that must have been the great promise he saw in Dr. Baumia. But what has he seen him, really? He says he sees, saw something in him. What is it? We'll, we'll interrogate that. And remember that PMS is always brought to you by Territory mm -hmm. Properties. We develop spaces as though we we're going to occupy them ourselves. Syntax tanks, it is strong, it is tough. A global business experience greatness in every moment. Ghana AIDS Commission, Syntex Tank is the tank for you to use. If indeed you want to store water, you want to store water in a way that is sustainable, but also in a way that you know will ensure that you get your water needs dealt with. Because you have the double layer tank, and now you can also have as many layers as you want. In fact, they have bespoke services. Call them one white inner layer, you, any color you want, they'll do for you. And you just get your preference dealt with very quickly. Syntex tanks, they have seven years warranty, which no other tank in Ghana can give you. So whatever your water consumption need, the size of the project, just call them. Call them on 0244-335168 or shop online syntexgh.com, a uh, strong, a uh, tough. If you're looking for people who build for you, but they'll not just build, but they'll build, they'll, they'll build with passion because they build it as though they want to live there themselves. Then you want to call 
Cherry Tree Properties because they have Sloan Square. It is a new gated community uh, development at Sakumono, developed by Cherry Tree Properties, a one of a kind, well planned luxury you have never experienced. Call them on 0553 662 366. Cherry Tree Properties, sophistication and class. Nana, so you started by saying that you saw something, Bamiya, that convinced you that in spite of your very high profile, you want to be his campaign spokesperson, in essence. What is it that you saw in him? Well, if you look at the, the man, uh, the stuff that he is made of, um, which he has articulated to Ghanaians over the years, if you remember the, in the period after uh, 2012, and in 2008, when he, when he was selected as the running mate, there was barely five months to the elections. We didn't see much of him. Uh, then he was repeated as running mate in 2012. Then the NPP was declared the losers of the 2012 elections, and the NPP decided to uh, go to court to challenge the, the results. Now, you had a three-week window to gather your evidence and file at the Supreme Court. It involves a lot of work, getting all the pink sheets together and doing the analysis and making sure you have a solid case all within three weeks before you went to the Supreme Court. And all that work was, was largely done by this Dr. Baumia in the late in December 2012. And some of us who were part of, of that effort saw the hard work that the man put in, working day and night, getting the pink sheets together. There were, there were about 25,000 of them, if you remember. And getting all this together, doing the photocopies and doing the analysis of every pink sheet to build a solid case. And we also, when he presented the work that he has done before the Supreme Court, those eight months when he was the star witness and um, facing formidable NDC lawyers. We saw the work that he did. And even though the NPP didn't win the court case, there were many changes that came into our electoral system recommended by the judges themselves as a result of the flaws pointed out by Dr. Baumia. It led to many changes in the electoral system. And it led to changes in the NPP's own preparations for elections. And um, if you compare it to what happened recently when uh, your good friend, Asie Dunketia, attempted a similar feat, went to the Supreme Court to challenge his results, and he didn't have a shred of evidence. One, not a shred. So he ended up being given a calculator that he used for the elementary mass, and he was, being, he was doing a two, two times four divided by 20. You know. Compare that to the solid work that Dr. Barbia did and the changes. So it got all of us uh, to, to, to realize that this young man is really a dedicated man, full of ideas, full of um, initiatives. And then he came to be third time running mate in the 2015 or so. And there we had a chance to see his breath of vision and breadth of knowledge about the economy of this country. Mm. Oh, we'll talk about the and economy. Then, but, uh, Let's yeah, I'm the not party. going to talk about mm. that. So those seminar lectures that he gave, and I'm sure any time he was going to give those lectures, they were like state of the nation addresses. There was major national interest. And then, of course, that also um, led us into the historic victory of the NPP. 2016. 2016. So you say since he became vice president, the work that is done. Yeah, well, that, that's what I that. said. I'll come so, to. No, I'm, saying, let, I'm, let, not, I'm not going to go. I'm saying these are the things that let us you. realize that uh, this this gentleman has something that is. But the icing on the cake is 
You know, the NPP, we've always suffered from a certain branding from our opponents. Every election after election, they repeat that branding. What is that? And the branding is that, ah, this is a, an Akan party. If you are not a Khan, you can't be their leader. You hear them in a crowd, and I've experienced it. They tell people that, well, these people, you vote for them, they'll take their seat to Kumasi. But you're an Akan party. You have also been fooled. And then they go to the coast, they but tell them... Your they, evidence shows you are, at least in now, the leadership of your party. You hear NDC, like President Mahama, for example, saying that, no, these people, they, you can't be their leader. They don't, they're just using you and all of that. So we suffer that branding. But, 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 now, it's, but it's based on your history. Now, well... You accept that? Okay, so in Dr. Baumia, we have a good chance to neutralize that branding of the party. To what? Change the brand from a camp party the, to what? Change the brand to, from a camp party to a party that is all-inclusive. We've always been an all-inclusive party. You haven't been, at least not at the leadership level. Okay. You haven't been. So now we have the tool in our hands to change that branding, and that is Dr. Baumia. So that is an icing on the cake. Because he comes now, from the north. Because he's not a can. Now, But will you be accused now, of... Playing, playing the tribal card. You can interpret it the way you want. We interpret it as changing the brand of the party and giving the party a more inclusive brand that will neutralize the propaganda. The special from electoral opponents. college, do they care about that? Absolutely. Because you, they care about having a candidate who will win the elections. Now, if you have a candidate like Dr. Baumia, who... Would, you, you would give you a more inclusive branding and would neutralize the NDC's propaganda. Because when they go to the voter region, they go to the other areas, they tell them, these, these people... Does that still hold sway? But that's what they say. And, 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 and to the extent that they win elections, it's possible that they hold sway. You have John Mahama himself proclaiming on the rooftops that these people will never have you because, you know, you don't belong. But, but and a, that, that propaganda, if at that level, they are saying, you can imagine what they do on the ground when they, when they go but to... There's, but there's a risk in using that in the campaign within your party. Because the fact that you're on a camp party, or that brand that you've been tagged with, yeah. not only because of your leadership, historical leadership, uh, trend that you I just showed earlier, where mm -hmm. a lot of people coming into leadership with from from yeah. camp but also, you have the, your stronghold is Ashanti region. Yes. Right? And for Dr. And, and, Balmia... And the Eastern region. And the Eastern region, exactly. Yeah. And, and Dr. Balmia, history shows, and on Friday when people join us at 8, we'll show this. You've never won an election in this country when you've secured 70 or less in the Ashanti region. You have to hit 75 plus all the time to win yeah. an election mm -hmm. in, in Ashanti region. Mm -hmm. So when Balmia pitches himself... As a guy who's changing the brand, isn't he also risking alienating those strong MPP voters in your stronghold where you are that main contender? Alan Chemanting is also going to say, I am one of your own. Vote for me. Isn't there a risk there? No, Ashanti is a stronghold. A stronghold means these are people who believe in the party not necessarily who is leading the party. You understand? I am a supporter of Accra House of Folk. I don't care who the star player is or who the coach is. I care that the team would win. When I go to Europe, I care about who the player is. So I used to support Chelsea because they had Ghanaian players African players in there. Supported a very bad team. When, when, when those players left Chelsea, I would look... In fact, when, when I see two teams playing in Europe, for example... You just look for the Ghanaian. I, no, no, I look for the team with black players. And then my sympathies go with that. But when it comes to hearts of folk, eh, I am a stronghold. I don't care who leads hearts of folk. But when it comes to European soccer... I care who leads us or who, uh, who, who's playing where is important to me. Ashanti is a stronghold.
Now, that propaganda of the NDC, that when they go to the Volta region and other places, they say, these, are, these people they are, they don't like you, they are, don't vote for them, and so on. We want to neutralize that propaganda. For, for what? And, why? What, what, what is the political advantage? Well, to the so? extent that your opponents are using that against you, they, they believe there's a political advantage, and it is in, to your advantage that you neutralize it. So you, you then, know, let, let me give you some. You know, the NDC traditional strongholds, the Volta region, the Northern region, the Zongo communities, traditionally. The NPP stronghold, traditionally, Eastern region, where we get about 60%, and then Ashanti, where we get about 70%. The rest of the regions, they float. Western region, Central region, Accra, they float. These regions always vote in a particular way. Volta region, Northern region, the big Zongo communities. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee, or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not in the combo, single item at regular price. In the south for NDC, all the time, since 1992. Eastern region, Ashanti, NPP, all the time. Now look at what is happening in one of the NDC strongholds in the north. Things that Dr. Bamia came onto the scene. When you take the 2008 elections, there were 20, uh, 26 seats in the northern region. Now there are three regions, but that whole block. And the NPP in 2008, for the presidential, we won in five constituencies. Then they became 31 seats in 2012. And when they became 31 seats in the presidential elections, NDC won in 24 constituencies, 2012. But the NPP increased to seven. Then in 2016 presidential elections, NDC dropped from 24 to 22 constituencies. And the NPP went up from seven to nine. In 2020, NDC dropped further to 17 constituencies. And NPP went up from nine to 14. So as we speak, in the presidential election, NDC won in 17, we won in 14, which is a jump from the 2008 figures of five to 21. When you take the parliamentary, 31 seats, well, in 2008, there were 26 seats. NDC had 20, NPP had 4. I think there was one independent or so. But when they became 31 seats in 2012 elections, NDC had 20, NPP had 10. 2016, NDC dropped to 18, NPP went up to 13. 2020, as we speak, NDC has 15, NPP has 16. And the, so your the, point is? The Northern region over two major elections, is no more a stronghold of the NDC. And you put it down to Dr. We'll Baumia put, put it to Dr. Baumia. What's the largely, evidence? Not largely. Now, because before he came, we're not getting those votes. Now, we believe that if we present him as presidential candidate, he would, of all the candidates, Further, the weakening of the Northern region, which is a major stronghold of the NDC, weaken it as we speak. In the presidential, they have a slight lead of 17 constituencies and we have in 14. By the parliamentary, we're actually ahead of them. We have 16, they have 15. And we believe that that trend will deepen if we have it. And then the Zongo communities is the best place to be able to neutralize the NDC in the Zongo communities. So these are bonuses. And that's why many of us believe that. At this time, when we want to do something that has not been done before, as in breaking the aid, as in breaking the aid you, need, and, you and need all those factors. And those factors come together nicely in Dr. Baumia. However, your main opponent, Alan Chamantin, is also arguing that he also is best placed to weaken the NDC in their stronghold of the Volta region, where 
his argument is Dr. Bamia isn't accepted. You have to do as well in your stronghold and take a bit of votes away mm -hmm. from your main Corporate, opponent yeah. in their stronghold as well. Yeah. He says, of course, because he comes from the Ashanti region, that is secure. And then he's the only person who can chip away at NDC's votes in the water region. Isn't that a counter, and, and what is a the, far more stronger argument? What is the basis of that? I have given you a basis for Dr. Bamiya's uh, 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 chipping away at NDC. Well, uh, what is the basis well, of that? Well, at least he hasn't, he's not been on the ticket before. Mm -hmm. so, so what is the basis of that? Because at least he has a Amewu in his camp. <laughs> Amewu who did a miracle. He did a miracle. In the Volta region, you wouldn't dispute that as a miracle. If you are going to... Your, your former regional chairman, who wins a seat that nobody in your party has dared win before. If... He has him in his camp. He's <laughs> loved in the Volta region. So he will get the votes no, there. No, there how many constituencies are in the Volta region? Are you saying Volta region is not important? No, no how, many, how many constituencies? I'm just wondering why that is... No, that because Amewu has just one. Yes. Yes, so if somebody has one seat, how do you conclude that then he holds sway over a whole region. With many. But do you know the, the, the gurus of the party in the Volta who also support her? Like Dr. Who? Baumia. Oh, the former regional minister, uh, I think he's now at um, Buidam. I think he's now at Buidam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he's a key member of Dr. Baumia's campaign. Uh, the name is just escaped me. But he's at Buidam now. He's the most. He used to be the Volta regional minister and all of that. And there are many people in the voter who also support Dr. Bao. But I'm saying there's no basis for what you are telling me about Alan Chen. I've given you a basis for Dr. Bao. Dr. Bao, you can point to the numbers because he's yes. been on a ticket. Yes. So he's run a national yeah. election yeah. and has been on a ticket. He's been voted for together with the president. Yeah. Alan hasn't. Yeah. So what's but, the basis? There's no, no basis. But, 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 but as I pointed, he has people in this company who have done miracles it's just in self, the voter region. It's self belief. That's all. Yeah, but that's what you need in politics. Yeah, but it must be backed by figures on the ground. And I've given you figures on the ground. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to that issue of him being the anointed one, anointed by the president. The president was forced recently to come out to say categorically he's not backing anybody. And many suggest he was forced to do that because he had a rumor and very, very loud rumor that he is coercing the party structures to favor Dr. Bahamia. And that has been translated into a conversation that was confirmed in the same seat you were, you are sitting in right now, Babuache Jack, who says that seven or eight of them have been meeting and they've been talking. And he says a question had come up about who is the establishment candidate. And they had agreed, at least he suggested Bahamia, because there's no doubt about it, he says. And then they talked about the possibility of what happens if there's a runoff and they, would they back the establishment candidate or the non-establishment candidate? They said, they'll back the non-establishment candidate, whoever that is. Does that worry you? How do you define an establishment candidate? Somebody who's got the support of the president? One. That's the, that's the definition? He is a vice president. He yes. is the very embodiment of the establishment. We used to have a vice president who contested in 2008. We didn't call him establishment candidate. Why are we calling this one the establishment? Is it because the president supports him? Because the president himself has come out categorically that I don't support anybody. Many of them who are sat here with me, they say they don't believe the president. Look, do you know Afri Akuto? Yes. He's a boyhood friend of the president. Do you know Boachi Ajako? Yes. He was the campaign manager for the president of two elections. Huh? And, and then you, you can ask Kamala Jipo, who was also a campaign manager of his. So, <laughs> any of them can, be, can have the president's support. None of them have been his Unless his, the president categorically... President. Sorry? None of them have been his have, vice I've said there has been a vice president who was not classified as an establishment candidate. So being vice president automatically doesn't mean you have the president's support. Look, I am an appointee of the president. I support Baumia. I have told you why. When we, we, I, we go to the campaign, I see a lot of government appointees like myself. And I'm happy. Now, I'm happy that these people are also on the campaign. Now, I do not think any of them 
is supporting Dr. Bamia because the president has called them and asked them to do so. How is it possible in the NPP that you can coerce anybody to support a candidate? Can I be coerced? I'm going to take myself as an example. I'm the, the, president can, the president can do deals. He's, he has the power and the resources to do deals. Well, as far as he, he I He can am, appoint and disappoint. He can fire you tomorrow. So, of course, if that's a, that's a threat over your head, why wouldn't you comply? There are ministers of state appointees of the president. Recently, an appointment was made into a ministerial position, a lady. I don't know if she's a uh, big supporter of Baumia. She was given an appointment by the president. Um, the president has never, in fact, I haven't met the president in the last six months, for him to even talk to me about what I think about the presidential. And many of the government appointees that are supporting and following Dr. Baumia, I, can't Im I cannot imagine any of these stalwarts being coerced to go and follow Dr. Baumia. Are you saying that those who support Alan, they resisted coercion? And we who follow Bamiya, we could not resist coercion. It's even an insult to our intelligence for people to be peddling that notion. And the president himself has come out categorically. Unless evidence can be presented that the president is doing things to favor Dr. Bamiya, then we can interrogate it. But the man himself has come out to say, no, I've had this suspicion. I do not. And nobody has presented any evidence. So when you say establishment candidate, what do you mean? Are you denying he's the establishment candidate? The, unless we agree on a definition. What is the definition? He, I, I, what I believe is that he is the front runner. And, and he's the front I'm, runner not because... And he's the front runner because? He's the front runner because... Because of the things you've said earlier? Be, be, yes, because of the things I've said earlier. Okay. That... Many people are convinced that he's the best person for us at this time. Mm. Well, he says he is the frontrunner, not E a frontrunner. Okay, so if he's the frontrunner and not a frontrunner, when we return from this break, we'll ask him. There are obviously special electoral college voters who will make a decision on Saturday. He's saying that because, of course, this is the elite of the party. Right? The elite of the party, MPs, ministers, party executives, who are all part of the establishment. Maybe that's why he ran away from the establishment kind of description. And he knows because they are, they are that, they will certainly vote for him. So he is a front runner. But remember that this game doesn't end on Saturday. The real one is in November, where the grassroots will vote. What about that? Is he still the front runner? When it comes in November race, when the flag bearer will now, whoever is aspiring to be will now have to pitch himself against 200,000 people plus across the country. And that's where Alan says he has the strongest bet. Stay with me after that. I'll put that to him. My name is Tina. I am a person living with HIV. I got to know my HIV status after I gave birth and lost the child because of HIV. In those days, prevention of mother-to-child transmission services had low patronage due to fear and stigmatization. Today, many HIV-positive women have delivered negative children. I follow the guidelines and take my HIV medicine called ARVs every day as prescribed by my doctor. This makes me strong and healthy and also prevent me from passing HIV onto any future child. Please, avail yourself of PMTCT services when pregnant. It is the only way to ensure you do not pass the HIV onto your baby during birth or pregnancy. If you have tested for HIV recently and it was negative, test again when pregnant. If you have tested positive, go to the hospital after birth as directed by your healthcare provider. Your baby will be given medicine immediately and tested to ensure baby and mother are well. Let us work together to have an HIV free generation. Our children must be free to shine.
Everybody came out, everybody looking good, displaying their art, beautiful art everywhere. Um, this is my fifth year coming in a row. So I'm here every August for the festival. It's been amazing being with my black people all day, every day. It's been great. It's so fun here. Yeah. There are a lot of art things to do. So I personally love it. And I love the artworks. I love Chalote 2022. It's fantastic. This year's experience is, uh, is marvelous. It's amazing. It's Chalote Festival, y'all. You ought to be here. The paintings, the people, the Ghanaians were awesome. Everyone, when you're in Ghana around the same time, make sure you check it out. It's really happening. Former Employment Minister and the Campaign Communications Director for the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, is my guest in the studio. Before we end it, you say that the Vice President is the front runner. And you're saying that obviously because on Saturday, the individuals who will be casting your ballots are the elites of your party, the, the representation of the establishment, ministers, MPs, executives, etc., etc. But the real vote is not Saturday. The real vote is November, where the grassroots of the party be voting. Isn't that where Balmia begins to struggle? Well, every election is done by a delegation. You agree? Of course. So this election is by about 900 people. And you could say that it's a, it's a small number compared to the 200,000 people in November. But every election is, is a delegation. It doesn't reflect, uh, you, you don't have the entire uh, pool. Because even the 200,000 people in November, there are 6 million voters of the NPP. So even the 200 is still a microcosm. You understand? Mm. Same as the 900. So, like I say, these people are leaders of the party across board, across constituencies, across regions, across national levels. These are the leaders of the party who have the confidence of the, of the, of the grassroots of the party. So it, it, you cannot divorce them from the grassroots. And why am I saying so? Look at the precedent. In 2014, when we had... Uh, the same electoral college, same group of people. Akufado, who was, who, 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 who was the first of the five, mm -hmm. he had over 80%. Uh, the, the second person was Alan Shermanty, he had 80%. When they went for the main election to select the flag bearer, Akufado had 94%. That's the precedence. Yeah, but the point is, what's the margin for superdelegates for Dr. Barmer, which is the key thing? I think there's no we doubt. Haven't, we haven't done the election yet. I Let's know. wait for the election. But I'm saying that to try and divorce the superdelegates from the main election may not be accurate because the superdelegates are people who have also come from the mm. party. So that the, and the, the, they dynamics, also, the dynamics they are different. And I come, that brings me to my next point, really. And I've given you the precedent that... The way the superdelegates voted in 2014, clearly the same way that the, the main delegates voted in 2014. Well, I, I, and I've given you no, the no, no two elections got. are the same, and you know that. And so why, that are you trying to that, that, why are you trying that, to that, generalize that, that, elections? So, but let's, 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 let's come to an issue that we'll touch <laughs> mm -hmm. on before we, we wrap up, which is, Dr. Barmia, you said, 
when he was in a, a candidate with the president, uh, made a big deal of his economic background. Yeah. So why is the economy in crisis when he is a chair of the economic management team? Isn't that his biggest Achilles heel? Well, uh, the vice president of Ghana, his official functions are spelled out in the Constitution. Article 61 gives you the functions of the vice president. It says that assignments given to him by the Constitution of the president, that's all. It, it, it then gives him, I think, head of armed forces council and police council or something. Was that official function? And if any other thing is something that is given to him by the president, and then when the president is away or cannot act as president, he steps in. So those are the uh, functions of the president, of the vice president. He was given additional responsibility of um, the correct management team. The correct management team is not the last voice on the economy of Ghana. They work to cabinet. The economic management team works up to cabinet. That's it. Mm. The question is, do you buy that argument? Now, but, but also, just as a general matter, the, the Ghanaian economy was doing fairly well. Mm. We were from the three years between 2017 and 2019. Mm. So you've now moved also, to the defense of where we are currently. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about, mm. I'm situating the, your question in a broader context, mm. away from Dr. Bavia, that we are going through turbulence because of reasons that all of us know. As we speak, today, there's record youth unemployment in China. Yeah, everywhere the, the, the Chinese central bank is, the English uh, uh, central bank lost 150 billion pounds. Yeah, ex- of ex- except that... So there's, there's, time, a, there's a general crisis. Time, time has run out, and I guess you're hoping that time will not run out on you. Well, you did uh, too much comment on, the time on, on Saturday. But thank but, you very uh, much. Sat- after Saturday, let's meet. Oh, yes. And then we'll look at it. Yes, look all the best thank on you. Saturday and beyond. Thank Can you. I come here? Enjoy the rest of your evening.